Good morning, Bethany Mandel. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, Bethany, I'm going to ask you the questions that I hope to ask Dan Senor, uh, Michael Oren, John Podhoritz, Matt Continenti, and Yossi klein Levy this week. I'm not going to ask Seth because I won't have mine. You're, this is Bethany's show. Uh, so question number one. Uh, I listened to Dan Senor's podcast and the commentary podcast twice, uh, driving to and from Ohio this weekend. And, and Dan, they talked about the internal and the external conversations among the Jewish community in America. Look, I don't think there is an internal conversation anymore. Everything is external. Do you agree or disagree with me? Unfortunately, yeah, we're seeing sort of the, these conversations play out in public. Um, and, um, you know, I thank God for, for publications like Commentary. Um, and then on the left, there's the places like The Forward. Um, but all of these conversations are happening right out in the open for everyone to watch. I don't think that's so, a good thing. So I think we got to remind people uh, who are used to talking American Jews to American Jews or Israelis to Israelis or cross. No, actually, Gentiles are listening all the time and learning stuff we didn't know because we're very interested for strategic and ideological reasons in the fate of Israel. Second question, Amanda uh, Borschel Dan runs the uh, the Times of Israel What Matters Now podcast, and she said Israel has gone from Daniel to Goliath in the world. I don't believe that's true. I mean, from, from David to Goliath. I, I still think of it as David. I think most of America thinks of it as David, and I don't care what the EU thinks. I, I, I don't want uh, Israelis to think that we think of them as Goliath, we don't. What do you think? No, I mean, listen, in, in Gaza, if you want to compare, like, Gaza versus Israel, Israel does have a pretty significant military. Um, that said, that military and that intelligence operation was completely caught off guard exactly six months ago, and over a 1,000 people were slaughtered. Um, that's not how I understand the David and Goliath story. Um, it has been uh, a real education, I think, and a, and a humbling experience the last six months, because as much as Israel has done to try to eliminate Hamas, there's still a lot left to do. And it's been, you know, full bore for the last six months. Uh, there are, it was it, there are still Goliath because they face Iran and Hezbollah. Yeah. And the yep. Houthis, it's just crazy for the Israeli press to do that. But this brings me to question number three. Internal Israeli politics are now driving a lot of the commentary out of Israel, and it's bad news for Israel. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we don't really care about Yair Lapid coming to the United States or what Benny Gantz wants elections or what Netanyahu is doing politically. We want Israel to win. Uh, yeah. Do you think Israeli politics are reemerging as the dominant storyline? Yeah, so Lahav Harkov wrote um, a great piece for Jewish Insider last week. There have been riots in the streets. Um, on behalf of, of some of the hostage families. But what a lot of outsiders don't realize is that all of those riots were pre-existing to October 7th about uh, judicial reform. This is just anti-BB opposition. And unfortunately, a lot of the hostage families, their cause has been co-opted by people who just want to take down BB. And I think it's a really disgusting situation where people's pain is being weaponized for political reasons domestically, but also their pain is going to be elongated because Hamas is verbally saying, why would we come to the table when we are watching Israeli society fracture? There's no reason for us to come to the table. They're not feeling the military pressure the same way that they were. And they realize that them holding the hostages is tearing Israeli society apart. What I wish were happening was some real serious conversations about, you know, who, who let their guards down on October 6th to allow October 7th to happen? I, I think heads should roll, and I think that includes Bibi at the end of the day, because he was the man in charge. But right now is not that moment to be having that conversation. And having riots in the streets of Tel Aviv, which is literally what's happening, is only helping Hamas, and it's only keeping the hostages there longer. Um, and it, it's hard because a lot of Israelis don't feel like they can say this publicly because they want to honor the pain of these hostages, but there's also the pain of the hundreds of families who have lost IDF soldiers who don't want their loss to have been in vain. We have to defeat Hamas here. Yeah, four, four IDF soldiers died on Saturday in an ambush yeah. from a tunnel. Now, your reaction, I'm going to keep you over the break and put on the podcast uh, so we have one minute. 
What did you think when Tony Blinken compared Israel to Hamas on Thursday? Oh, my God. So, so disturbing. And what's crazy is if you drive by his house in Washington, D.C., absolute demon psychopaths have been protesting outside his home for months. He understands the difference here. Yesterday in Washington, D.C., there was a rally with thousands of people holding American flags and singing Hatikva. Like, that's Israel. And the demons who have been protesting outside his home, that's Hamas. He, he knows the difference. He does. I know one of his neighbors. I had lunch with one of his neighbors last Wednesday, and he told me about this ongoing demonstration. Unlike the demonstrations outside of Supreme Court justices' homes, this gets no attention. And for and I don't really want to give it any attention other than to mention Tony Blinken does know the difference. I'm going to finish my questions for Bethany during the break. You can go to Hugh, highly concentrated Hugh podcast to hear the rest of them. Don't go anywhere, America. I'll be right back for hour three of today's show. Portions of the Hugh Hewitt Show are brought to you in part by AmericansForProsperity.org. Continuing now with Bethany Mandel. Bethany, I listened to the latest commentary pod twice. It was so fabulous with Seth and Matt and John and Abe. And then I listened to Dan Senor with Yossi klein Levy and Rabbi Egnar. And I listened to them twice, and they take about two and a half hours because they're so good. But <laughs> here's something I don't get. The international reputation of the Israelis. It's not what matters. What matters is the reputation of Israel inside America. And I'll bet you three out of four Americans are with Israel. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think Americans see what's happening in Gaza as as a proxy fight in some way between Western values and and barbarism. I, I, I can't I can't describe it any other way. What they what they perpetrated in Israel was completely barbaric. And I think Americans see that this fight is going to come to our borders eventually, um, <laughs> probably our southern border. Um, this is. This is a fight between good versus evil, and it's one that we have to win as Westerners, as lovers of freedom and democracy. Um, and that's why, like, whenever we talk, I, I use the word we, and it's because we have to win this fight as people who want Western ideals to survive. Now, by the way, this is not on my list, so I may not ask it the others. David Cameron can just shut up for all I care. And Mr. Burrell, the guy no one's ever heard of who purports to speak for the, quote, European Union, he can shut up, too, just like Gutierrez can shut up. I'm tired of these people pretending to represent the world. The world, the free peoples of the world are with Israel. I don't even think it's close. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a lot of anti-Semitism out there. If, if you look at the death toll that has happened in places like Nigeria, places where they are also facing Islamic terrorism, None of these people give a crap about anything that's happening. All they care about is what's happening in Israel between Hamas and, and Israel. And what's really disturbing is they parrot Hamas talking points, and they, they don't seem to care that everything that's happening is because Hamas is, for example, making al-Shifa hospital a, a place where there are, are battles happening. They, they, they don't care that Hamas is enabling the level of destruction and the world central kitchen that huge story that happened last week now quietly we've come to realize that hamas had brought fire onto that van they knew what they were doing and the world just played into their hands like puppets yeah that story will i'm waiting for that story to emerge in full detail it looks like mm -hmm. hamas set up world food kitchen but i don't think we'll hear chef andres by the way why do we care what he thinks about it. I'm glad he's a humanitarian. If he came on this show, he wouldn't last five minutes if I asked him serious questions, Bethany. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think he has a big heart, but he can't operate in Gaza freely while saying anything about Hamas, and he knows it. And so he's faced with an impossible question. Does he help these people and shut his mouth and help Hamas, or he or does he not? And that, that's, a, that's a difficult thing when there are people who are genuinely suffering. But the answer is we have to defeat Hamas. To help yes. the people of Gaza, the end of the day, we have to defeat Hamas. Are you disturbed by the fact that Israel's down to a brigade and a division, or maybe even just a brigade in Gaza? I'm not. Uh, I think a brigade can beat the five battalions of Hamas that are left. But what do you think? So I'm hearing that they're gearing those guys up that they just pulled out to, to push them further, further south into Rafah, and I think that's the right move. 
Um, I think that they dilly-dallied for a month and a half waiting for American permission or some semblance of American permission. But I think that the Netanyahu government realized, especially with the, the Biden comments and the Blinken comments, like they have to go it alone. And I think that they're they're prepared to do so. Yeah, they're not going to say it out loud, but screw them. I mean, yep. just screw them. Uh, two more questions, Bethany. Uh, Amanda said, and I think this is true, but I want to hear your reaction. Israel has decided it is better to be feared than loved. They don't care about love of the, of the world anymore. They want, to, they want the Middle East to fear them. What do you think? I think fear, but love, but also survive. <laughs> like, this, is, this is a battle. This is an existential battle for, for survival. And at the end of the day, people love dead Jews. I mean, that's, that's the famous Der Horn book. But Jews have decided they're not, they're not willing to roll over and play dead. And, you know, Holocaust Remembrance Day is rolling up. And I think that Israelis have realized, um, you know, this is, why, this is why they have created a military force, because they, that will not happen again. Never again is now. Last question. Uh, I listened to Brett Stevens on the Goodfellas podcast, which is out of the Hoover Institution. And it has some great people on it, like General McMaster, the former National Security Advisor, and Neil Ferguson. On that, Brett Stevens was the guest, New York Times columnist, and he said, the opinion Israel needs to win over is in Riyadh. No, no, no. The only opinion they need is the Israeli public opinion and maybe American opinion. If Riyadh wants to come along, good. They already realize that they want to be with the strong horse and Israel's the strong horse. But I I just can't believe Brett said that. Do you care what Saudi Arabia thinks? No, I mean, I think what matters, what, what could actually move the dial is if everywhere in the world starts put, putting pressure on Qatar. That, that is the golden ticket here, and no one has really done so. Um, what's inexplicable to me is that Al Jazeera, which is owned by the Qatari government and is a mouthpiece for them, they have full press credentials in every branch of American government. Why? What, what, well, I why think I know why. Why? Cutter, I've, I've, I've met their ambassador. I know some people from there. They've always said, we'll do whatever America wants us to do. We've got the base here. If they want us to stay open for Hamas intermediary, we will. If they don't want us, we won't. So it's really up to Blinken and Biden to tell yep. Cutter what to do. And they're not, they're not saying shut them down. No. No, I mean, wouldn't it be nice for them to exert a fraction of the pressure they're putting on Israel on Cutter instead? We might actually get the six American hostages who are also in Gaza. I mean, this, this is something that not enough people are talking about. Of the 133 hostages that are left in Gaza, there's six American citizens that are presumed alive. Where, why isn't Biden talking about them every day? Have you ever heard him say any of their names? I have not, and I watch no. it very closely. No. Uh, National Review wrote a great piece about all six this week. Bethany Mandel, I got to run back on, talk to Garrity. I appreciate you so much. Bethany Shondark on X, read everything she says. And, of course, have a great Eclipse Day, Bethany. I hope you're taking the children out with the appropriate glasses on to watch the Eclipse. We're in western New York ready to roll. Uh, You see, you're one of those people. I don't care about the Eclipse. I've seen it too many times. But you go for it because it might be 75 years and they might not be around. Thank you, Bethany Mandel. Thank you.